Hi everyone and welcome to NMC1. Today we'll be looking at chapter 10 in your notes. The first thing we're going to be discussing is the electrical properties of materials and initially we're going to compare the types of conductors. So as you can see from the described inscribed diagrams you have the valence band band gap as well as the conduction band basically with the basics of conduction of electricity what you have to know is that for there to be electrical conduction there has to be electrons that are transferred to the conduction band so that when current moves through the conduction band it is able to move through the electrons but you can see with insulators that there is a huge band gap, which sometimes they refer to the energy gap. This is basically the amount of activation energy needed for electrons to be excited from these valence bands to the conduction band. But you can see that the gap is so wide for insulators. So it's almost impossible for insulators to conduct electricity. Secondly, you have semiconductors, which have a small band gap. And electrons can actually be excited with sufficient enough gap energy to the conduction band for them to conduct electricity. But this, with, this is with a bit of activation energy. So it's possible for semiconductors to contract electricity because the electrons can actually jump from the valence band with enough activation energy to the through band gap to the conduction band. And then you have conductors which are least resistant because the conduction band is close in within close proximity with the valence band. So it, there isn't any band energy required for conduction to take place. So that's why it's easy for conductors to conduct electricity. So now we're going to look at them individually. First, we're going to look at conductors. I'm basically going to skim through this because this is something that you probably did in high school so it won't be a long discussion so basically with conductors you know that it follows the ohm's law of conduction ohm's law which can basically be simplified delta v equals to by R as being the resistance this being the current and this being the voltage right now the material properties that can be derived from Ohm's law would first you have to establish what makes a material property material properties those properties of a material that are with respect to the specific material with respect of the dimensions thereof so say now this is a conductor of a specific length with this cross-sectional area cross-sectional area this is a cross-sectional area with a specific current that passes through it we just name it current i at a specific potential difference voltage 
right now the material properties are resistivity resistivity and conductivity conductivity so the electric field intensity e electric field intensity can be described as the potential difference over the specific distance in turn this can be rewritten as current density which is current over the area multiplied by the material resistivity this is the material resistivity This part is the current density. And of course, the resistivity is measured in ohms theta. This is the material property, which is independent of any dimensions of the specific material. And subsequently, it follows that the conductivity is the inverse of the uh, resistivity. It's basically all over the resistivity, which would mean that the units is the ohm meter. Right now, this is where you can see that resistance is not a material property because when you look at the resistance, there's a difference between resistance and resistivity. Resistance can be calculated as the resistivity multiplied by the length of the conductor over the area. So now we see two dimensional properties which do not constitute a material property which can invariably be written as L over A L if you're writing it in terms of conductivity but you can see that resistance is dependent on the, uh, the material dimensions but the resistivity is not at all dependent on material dimension and hence makes it a material property. Now, to continue, we know that in terms of the Ohm's law, It can actually also be expressed in a dimension independent equation as follows. So we have the current density 
which is equals to the electric field divided by the resistivity or just the current density being the electric field intensity multiplied by conductivity so resistivity being the material properties and the conductivity these are the important factors in the equation And so now we're going to look at factors that affect the conductivity of materials. What are the factors that affect the conductivity of materials? And again, this is something you can basically read from your notes. I'm also going to skim through it, but it's worth a mention. Factors affecting conductivity. Conductivity right. You have thermal a thermal component temperature of the specific conductor in question, the impurities within the material, impurities and deformation. Now these are factors that affect In particular, directly they affect resist resistivity. So, resistivity has components which is the thermal component plus the impurities plus the deformation taking place within the material. And these two are commonly referred to as a residual residual resistance so P residual is the impurities within the material as well as the amount of deformation that the material has undergone so overall you'd have the resistivity total being equivalent to thermal component plus the residual component right and the thermal component can be further described According to this formula, this is the resistivity at zero degrees This is how the thermal component Or resistivity can be described invariably if you write it in terms of the conductivity it will be the thermal conductivity component at zero degrees the conductivity at zero degrees Celsius
this would be invariably the inverse and the units will subsequently follow as the inverse. Let me distinctly describe all these different components of the thermal component. As I said, this is the resistivity. At zero degrees Celsius, alpha T, the temperature coefficient. Efficient of resistivity and T is basically the temperature. That's in degrees Celsius. And the lower resistivity is ohm meter. For conductivity, it follows suit. This is the conductivity at zero degrees. Zero degrees Celsius. Excuse my handwriting, doesn't seem to come out well. And subsequently, from the T for this one, the temperature coefficient of resistivity. Same as that one over there. So these are the basics of conductors, and the material property of conductivity and resistivity. I'm not really going to go any deeper than this. These are basic things you need to know. And next we will we'll be looking at semiconductors. That's where things get a little bit complicated.